King David was talking about the goodness of God. And he went on to say, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chat. Neither will he keep his anger forever. He's not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgression. Like as a father pitied his children, so does the Lord pity them that fear him. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. In the word of God also. Amen. We serve a good God that he bless us every day of our life, no matter how we act or what we do, he continues to bless us. Amen. Give an honor to God, to all the members of Gethsemane Missionary Baptist Church, to all that are here today, to all that are watching us on live stream. It's an honor just to stand before you to say what thus said the Lord. Amen. 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 How about our uh, voices of Gethsemane in the choir? Amen. Let's give them a hand. And we are continuing to build. So, it was eight, seven, eight. So next week it'll be 12. After that, 13, 14. Ready? So the number is 100. That's where we're stopping. That we ain't gonna work no bigger than 100. Amen. Amen. But we thank God for uh, our choir. We thank God for everybody that is here today. For uh, Reggie Hogan, Lil Steve on the drums, for our choir, for everyone that has a part in this morning's service. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I know the question, is there a word from the Lord? And there is a word from the Lord. If you've got your Bibles with you, if you would go to the book of Ecclesiastes, third chapter, and I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 8. And for those that are able, if you would stand for the reading of God's word, And the word of God reads, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to give, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rent, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. If you bear with me, I just want to go all the way back up to that first verse. And I just want to look at the A part of it where it says, to everything there is a season. And I want to tell somebody that's going through something, it's only for a season. With our head bowed, Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us. We thank you that you 
woke us up and started us on our way. Now, Lord, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the anointing that's in this house and upon me, these lips of clay. Lord, bless me that I speak this word with excellence, accuracy, and boldness, asking that you think through my mind, speak through my lips, and this word will come forth unhindered, unchecked by any outside force, and we give you all the praise, call it done, fully expecting signs, wonders, and miracles, confirming the word in Jesus' name, amen. It's only for a season. It's only for a season. Uh, our writer today says, for everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heavens. Part of God's great design of, of this uh, earth in seasons, we experience wet and dry, uh, the typical four seasons of winter, spring, summer, and fall. And there are other seasons like planting season and harvesting season. But we go through seasons in life, sadness, seasons of loss, seasons of joy, seasons of newness, and seasons of growth. And in this scripture today, the Bible tells us for everything there is a season. And it affirms two important reminders. And that is, one, the things we go through in life are not in vain. But not only that, number two is that our situations will not last forever. They are only for a season. We, we go through. God never promised us that this life would be easy. But he does promise us this is that he is bigger than any storm we face in this world. And he's always working for our good, even in places we can't see, even in circumstances we don't fully understand. He is with us, right in the midst, and walking us through every piece of it. Whatever you're going through right now, it's only for a season. In, in Psalms 104 and 19, it says, he appointed the moon for seasons, and the sun knows it's going down. See, God has appointed everything under the sun to be as determined, uh, as he determined, and nothing can change. Y'all, that's the way God has it. You, you, can't, that's, you can't change it. See, it, it, it would be like a human being trying to change summer to winter, or, or, or trying to change north from south. We, we just cannot do it. And so what God has ordained must come to pass, and this includes whatever happens to us, good or bad. We, we can't change it. We know that whatever comes to pass is part of God's will and is always working for our ultimate good. That's why the Apostle Paul said this in Romans 8, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Whatever happens in the seasons of our life, the glory that's going to be revealed to us someday will overshadow today's sorrow, as if it had never happen. Paul says in uh, the 8th chapter, the 8th verse, he says, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed unto us. Y'all, you may be going through something. You may be dealing with something. But I'm here to tell you that it's not going to last, but it, it, it's going to change. It's a season. And what God wants you to know that if you would just stay with him, all these little things that you're going through right now that you did, one day when you get in glory, you're not going to even think about that I had cancer, that I, my child was on. You, you won't even think about things, that the glory of it will just over, overcome. 
See, whatever you're going through is only for a season. Whatever it is, it's only for a season. And see, people today want you to think that that it that you're going through it is COVID-19, uh, the coronavirus. When I was putting this together, I looked at it. Last year, we were talking about COVID-19. Now we're talking about the Delta variant or the Omicron variant. And then I, I looked online this morning. It's got something that's called the Delta Con, the Cron. They, they didn't put them together now. So, so y'all, whatever it is, whatever it is, it may be sickness in your body. It may be an abusive marriage. It may be drug addiction. It may be a confused child. It may be the loss of a job, the loss of a loved one, financial problem. It may be depression. But whatever it may be, nothing is permanent. And God has promised that it will change. God's promised that nothing is permanent. And it goes on, and our scripture today says to everything that is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. See, whatever it is, it can't last forever. See, seasons, y'all, we go through this season and that season, but seasons guarantee change. See, you know it's coming. That there's some people right now, you, you know that it ain't gonna always be winter. Summer is coming. So, so when winter comes, you don't throw your summer clothes away. Because you know summer coming, it is coming back. You don't close your bank accounts. I like the way in Genesis, the eighth chapter, the writer puts it. He says, while the earth remained, Sea time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. It is never going away. You always going to have winter, sea time. It's always, that's the way God has set it up. It's seasons. And in seasons, y'all, it gives us incentive to plan. You know, I, I, I keep telling Pat, I'm going on a cruise next summer. Now, whether you go. That's a whole lot. I'm planning on it. I'm going on a cruise. I, 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 I'm here all the time. I'm doing, I'm going to take a break. But, but, but see, I know summer is coming. So I'm planning on it. When is the best time to buy summer clothes? Y'all know it. Because, see, we know summer's coming. Now, I, I told Pat last year, I said, you know, we get through this one. Baby, you got a mink coat coming in there. I better, I better leave that alone. I ain't gonna take that no further. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that right there. But I do know summer is coming, and then after summer, we got fall and all the other things that are, that, that, that are coming up. See, there are changes, y'all. And, and what you gotta understand is that some people get lost in the season. It's almost like they think that this situation that I'm in is not going to change. But I'm here to tell you that it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, is going to change one way or the other. In Galatians, the sixth chapter, the ninth verse, the writer says, And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Somebody heard it. Amen. It's going to change. In our book, in our, our lesson today, our text today in Ecclesiastes, uh, the writer of the text is King Solomon, the son of David. And, and Ecclesiastes, uh, Ecclesiastes is a book of perspective. And what he does is he gives his perspective on life. Uh, the Bible starts off that book of Ecclesiastes in the very first chapter. It says, hear the words of the preacher and that is in the King James Version. But if you look in the New International Version it says hear the words of the teacher. And what he does is uh, he gives a narrative, the preacher or the teacher that reveals the depression that he received as a result from seeking happiness in worldly things. 
You know, you, you, there's nothing that you can't depend on this world. I'm working on a sermon right now that says that if you can see it, if you can see it, it won't last. If you can see it right now. This, this book gives Christians a chance to see the world through the eyes of a person who is trying to find meaning in temporary human things. And most every form of worldly pleasure uh, is exposed to the preacher. And none of it gives him a sense of meaning. See, this is the, the King Solomon. And, and I had to look at, when you talk about that King Solomon couldn't find anything in the world, he, he, was, he was the richest man in the world. I, I went back and I looked up that if you took his net worth from back when he was king and you brought it to today's terms, in today's terms he would be worth $100 billion, over $100 billion. You, you can buy whatever you want. But see, here's the other thing. When you read in the Bible, it says that he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. And I, 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 I was startled at that because I said, I can't handle Pat. Now you look at all this. And I, and but what he was saying is that with all of that, that there's nothing. In, in the end, the preacher comes to the concept that faith in God is the only way to find personal meaning. He decided to accept the fact that life is brief and ultimately worthless without God. Uh, the preacher advises the readers to focus on the eternal uh, God instead of temporary pleasures. But what, what the, the point that Solomon is making to you and I, that though uh, we, we go through uh, cycles of life, each is with uh, works for, uh, for us to do. We each with works for us to do. And although we face many different uh, problems, and it seems to contradict that God has a plan for us, see, God does have a plan for you. He's got a plan for me. He, he knows you. No, not, not, he, he knows the person sitting next to you, but he knows you. And, and that's why we can say what Jeremiah said in, in Jeremiah 29. He said, for I know the plans of the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Timing is important. You know, all the experience listed in these verses are appropriate at certain times. The secret to peace with God is to discover, accept, and appreciate God's perfect time. See, there's some things that you want, and you want it right now. But see, God knows you can't handle it right now. So what he has to do, he said, there's a time that I'm going to give it to you when you least expect it. And that's how the writer says, for everything, there is a season. There's a time for every purpose under the heavens. Wisdom, y'all, wisdom recognizes that everything has its own season in human activities as it is in, in the realm of the nature, of nature. He says it's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up. Yo, do you know we had no control over being born? And of course, you have no control over your death. You don't know when it's going to happen. But he goes on to say, but our responsibility is to live wisely between those two events. There is no man that has power over the spirit to retain it. Neither has he power in the day of his death. Yo, there's a season for everything, a time to heal, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Yo, what you got to understand is that right now you might be going through something, but your season is coming. You gonna have, your season 
is coming, but you have to trust God. You have to serve God. You have to live the way God intended for us to live. I, I like the way the, the, the writer of Ecclesiastes, he ends it in that 12th chapter around the 13th verse. He says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. If you trust God, if you fear God, if you keep God's commandments, if you walk with God, I, I don't care what you're going through, your season is going to come. I, I said it this way last week, and I'll say it again. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and do he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Somebody missed it. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. I don't care what you're going through or what you're dealing with. Your season is coming. When you look around, I know right now you going some, you got some heartache, you got headaches, you got financial problems, you got sickness, but I'm here to tell you that your season is coming. I like the way the songwriter William Murphy, he said it this way, this is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. This is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. I haven't been perfect always, but I've been faithful. God has got a purpose for, uh, for me, and I know he's able. I've got a seed in the ground, and he's blessed. No more stress. I've got a seed in the ground. Now I know him and I can show him that this is my season for grace and for favor. This is my season to, to, to reap what I have sown. When you get into this world, you will go through all kinds of ups and downs. Things may not work out. You may have problems and tribulations, but God Yeah. <laughs> 